head. Ready? Me, me, me. One, two, three. Stitching two. <laughs> Settle down and watch Stitching two. <laughs> we can't sing the rest because Teresa stitching never told us the words. <laughs> Settle down and watch Stitching two. Very nice. <laughs> Stitchy tube, settle down and watch Stitchy tube. I'm here with my friend Ruby today. It is October 24th, 2019. My name is Teresa, also known as Kitten Stitcher, also known as Shakespeare's Peddler, also known as that weird lady. Sometimes, most times. Hello, hi, good to see you, friends. Um, I want to give a, a big shout out this today, this week, always to those husbands out there. Um, I actually, lately, it seems like I've been getting a lot of comments from people who um, say, my husband really likes you. Um, or my husband sings your song. Or, you know, my husband walks by and says, oh, is that that, that stitching lady, or that singing lady? So hello, husbands. Thank you for your support. Hello. Uh, I had a great time last week, went to the cross stitchers, the Midwest cross stitchers retreat in Amana colonies in Iowa, the great state of Iowa, rolling hills, corn, cows, um, pretzels, lots of good things there. So I'll talk about that in a bit. This is Stitchy Tube number 52, lucky number 52. And, um, you know, over halfway to 100, right? I guess if I make one a day till the end of the year, you will get sick of me pretty quickly. So I'm not going to do that. But I am going to tell you what I'm all into. I'm all into lately uh, for breakfast yogurt, vanilla yogurt with um, some granola and then some frozen raspberries. Um, it seems like for a while I was, I got kind of stuck on a cereal or two and I, and just cereal, cereal, cereal. I got into yogurt or uh, oatmeal for a while and now I'm onto yogurt. It's probably good for you. Um, I like the yogurts that have a lot of sugar. So that's not as good for you, but it's good for my mouth because it tastes good in there. I'm all into cardigan sweaters and that's just a given. Like I, I love a good card cardigan so much so that even the men in my life will see a cardigan and say, oh, that looks like you. And the bummer is I live in Mississippi, so I don't get to wear them as much as I would have up north. Um, I did just get a cool one in the mail this week from, um, J Crew, the J Crew outlet store, which you can get online. Um, it's pumpkin orange and um, no buttons. I don't like it necessarily to have but buttons. I like a loose flowing cardigan to wrap up in. So I, I just love a good cardigan. Uh, preferably plain with like not really even texture, just a plain, soft, longer, you know, past my butt kind of cardigan. I'm all into HelloFresh. We, you know, Harrison moved out the first, uh, the day before, what was it? The day before September 1st. And so it's just my husband and I here now. We're empty nesters. And I've gotten used to it. Like I've gotten used to it. Graham's still around and he'll be around probably until next summer. And then he also will probably move away. So um, getting used to the idea of having kind of an empty house with just my husband here. And um, it's hard to cook for two people. And uh, my husband's schedule is weird. You know, we're like some days he doesn't come home until like nine o'clock at night. Some days he's home kind of a most good chunk of the day, like almost all day. So I thought HelloFresh would be kind of cool. There's this guy I watch on YouTube called You Suck at Cooking and he has a book out now. But he had a um, coupon code, code which was um, YSAC80, YSAC80. And it's for uh, HelloFresh and you get $80 like off your first month. They end up being about $5 a meal, which isn't that bad. And um, you get to try some new recipes. You get only the ingredients you need. And even my husband is starting to make things just even by himself, which he hasn't really historically spent a ton of time in the kitchen. He does bake some for his uh, department. So it's been kind of fun to try these little meals and make meals together. Just kind of fun. I'm not saying we'll do it forever but it's fun for right now. I'm all into weeping willows. As a child, I didn't see a lot of weeping willows in Fargo, North Dakota. I don't know a lot about weeping willows, like how easy are they to grow? How long do they live? They were always so mysterious to me and they, you know, it's like, why are they weeping? Well, they are, you know, 
but uh, I, I liked, you know, running underneath them and feeling like I was enveloped in, you know, hippie beads hanging down. And um, I'm actually going to take you on a never before seen what I'm all into field trip. As a girl, I always loved weeping willows. I always loved weeping willows because they're kind of mysterious. Like, why are they weeping? I think it's a happy weeping. We never think about that. It could be happy weeping. But this one's got a beautiful um, trunk. And it's in beautiful surroundings. You're in Amana. You're in pretty old Amana. Love a good weeping willow. And you see them quite often on samplers. I'm going to see if I can find a sampler for here to show you what a weeping willow might look like on a sampler. I just think they're really fun. Do I have... No, I don't know if I have here, if I have any weeping willows. I don't know. Take it, take my word for it. Um, I think that's, that's actually, that was, that was all I made for my list this week. So that's what I'm all into this week. Only four little things. I'm, what I'm really way into is a mana, my trip to a mana. It's hard to even think about anything else. Um, I, I will add an addendum. I'm getting better at hugging. I know I've told a lot of you in the past that I don't like to hug. And I've made an effort probably for the last six months to just try to do it more and and like do self-exposure therapy, which is basically, you know, like if you were afraid of spiders, you might start looking at pictures of spiders, then you might actually see a real spider and you're afraid, but you kind of expose yourself to it. So I'm trying to do that with hugging and I'm getting better at it. And sometimes I'm even enjoying it. So um, sometimes I'm seeing people at events and, you know, like they go to give me a hug or I go to give them a hug and they're like, oh, you're not a hugger. And I'm like, nope, you know what? It's okay. Let's go for it. So um, that's another thing I'm all into this week is trying to hug people. I had some whips. I had some whips. I had some whips. <laughs> I had some whips. Of boop, boop, boop. I actually got to stitch last week. Actually, I actually got to stitch last week because I went to this thing in Amana and the goal was obviously to stitch some. So I, I did. I did. Do I have everything here? Where'd my other one go? Okay, I'm just going to start showing you. So one of the things I have been working on is this little chart called October 31st by Brenda G, who was at the retreat. And I'm almost done. I really need to just sit down and finish it because I have so little of it left. Um, just to finish the pumpkin and then the leaves and I need the stick to her broom. I'm stitching mine on a piece of 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. You will see I do not serge the edges. But it's pretty fun. It's in over dyed threads and I think I've just pretty much used what's called for. Um, I will show you the grass. I thought I could tell on her model that she stitched up and down. And so that's what I did on mine too, was stitched up and down so that the variegation would look like grass and not like horizontal stripes. And I think it's really cute that way. Um, the way that I did it is I would, I let, when I stitch in hand, I can stitch down all from the top and then I would just flip it and then stitch down, which was up, and then flip it again and then stitch down. That way it went a lot faster than trying to stitch up and down and up and down. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it um, made a big difference. And I kind of watch spooky crime shows, so that's kind of embedded in. I think some of us at the retreat even talked about how sometimes you have a project and embedded in the project is what you were doing, thinking, watching, experiencing at the time. Um, I think I've talked about it before, but I stitched a long time ago a piece by Shepherd's Bush called the Pod Potting Shed, maybe, sampler, or the Potter's Shed, something like that. And it's a lovely little sampler in like nice purples and browns. And I had morning sickness at the time with my second son. And so I still, I gave it to my mom because I, if I look at it, I kind of, I kind of feel like pukey. And so I gave it to her because I can't look at it. Still, even after all these 23 years. I stitched some on Anne Grimshaw by The Scarlet Letter. So pretty. I worked on letters. And a lot of people were like, oh, I like that. Um... I like that. I'm stitching it in Noir uh, Verisois on 40 count. It gives a really nice, thick, dark, clear, clear coverage on this 40 count. 
And so people were really digging that. The only stitches in this one are some eyelets. Are the letters in eyelets? Yeah, the letters are in eyelets, and then the rest is just a plain old cross stitch. And it was one I wish I had finished last year because she stitched hers in, in 1818. It would have been fun to finish it in uh, 2018, but that did not happen. I don't know where I put my other... Where did my other whip go? I don't know. I don't know. Hang on, I'm going to run and see. I'm going to run and see. I'll be right back. Okay, I found it. I found it. I had left it on the kitchen table. So uh, this is another one I was working on at the retreat. Uh, Jen stitched every hour and I had kind of planned on it, but honestly, I'm not a real follower. I'm just not. Um, I got, worked on my Salem Village by Not Forgotten Farm. I worked on um, this little yellow house here. Can you see? The little yellow house and the trees. And it took a while because it's on 40 count, so the stitches are really small and it's um, it was just solid, it's kind of solid stitching. It's a really neat piece. Um, I should have it in stock on my site, Not Forgotten Farm, Salem Village. There's what it, there's what it'll look like all done. So I think it's really neat. So I'm, you know, I'm a little more than halfway done, which is perfect for me. Perfect for me. So those were my, oh, no, I have a, uh, so at the retreat, I'm, I'll show you these now and then we'll talk about the retreat. Brenda G had some really cool little uh, projects for us at the retreat. I finished one on the airplane and I just have to do the full finish which was this little bird in a basket and it gets finished in a tart tray so um, with a little kind of spoolie stand to it that's what it'll look like all done it's very cute we made this little pin and we made a little fobby thing let me see if I can find them then I also started stitching this little needle book that was also part of the class um, just preemptively I don't know if I don't know if her plans are to release these um, later, like next year, as something that y'all can buy. It's not available now. It's not available now. And I'm actually not, I'm not super interested in loaning mine out. Sorry. Um, so I started stitching on the needle roll. This one. All right. And on the plane. And this is on like a 32 count. We don't know what fabric it is, but it's a hand dyed kind of coffee dyed kind of thing. Let's see if I can find my. So we made these little tiny fobs. And it's not stitched, it's printed on fabric. And it's got cute little pins in the sides. So we made that little fob. And then we made we made a little, I kept it in a bag so it wouldn't get marks on things because we used a little bit of kind of polish kind of thing. So here's my little raspberry. I'll put it here so you can see it little raspberry pin that was kind of fun that was kind of fun so <laughs> I smell things um this was the other design that she gave us as um and I'll, I'll show a better picture of it in a bit but we got this pattern it's big and I really would like to start it it's very very pretty and also that I don't I, I don't know what her plan is if if and when I find out what her plan is with those but don't count on them anytime soon. They just don't. And I don't I don't know what the story is. Um, also in this box, as long as I'm talking, I'm going to show my, uh, what I got as my exchange gift, which was this lovely over one uh, scissor fob by Carol. And it was Carol's first retreat and her first exchange, I believe. She did a great job. It's finished expertly, very, very pretty. And it's from the Autumn in Baltimore series, I think. But she did a wonderful job, came with the scissors and then it was in a really pretty orange kind of fall bowl filled with candy. We are eating the candy. The bowl went home with Marlene and I'll explain that later. I'm getting the bowl, don't worry, I'm, I am getting the bowl. So thank you, Carol, for your lovely gift. I'm gonna show my gift right now, um, what I made, I made the Summer in Baltimore box um, from, by Brenda Gervais. It is a pattern that's still available. I used her finishing directions. It was pretty much a piece of cake, actually. A lot of the finishing was done with just regular old glue stick and it, it works great. So if you just follow her directions pretty much to the T, it, it goes just great. Now I did finish my pillow with sawdust inside instead of stuffing, but uh, I thought it looked really nice. It got stolen once or twice and then, then it got frozen, but people were still like, hey, is Teresa still available? I think it turned out really nice. I would totally make one again. 
I would totally make one again. Let me make one again. Um, one of the other cool things is, is uh, Brenda gave us our kits in this printed box. And I was like, how did you print that? She was like, well, I don't, I don't print it. I send it to somebody. But how, I just, I'm going to hang on to the box and like put things in it because I think it's so, so pretty. So pretty. So that was really fun. Um, she also taught a class, um, gave a lecture about samplers, which I thought was super cool. Uh, people have been asking about the book that she used for her information. It's by Eileen Bennett. And I'll see if I can remember to put a link below. It is sold out now on Amazon. It wasn't a week ago. But it, she talked about kind of the history of samplers and like how far back it actually goes, which is a far way back. And then to today. And then the cool thing was is she kind of thought about what will, like we're part of history, right? We're part of stitching history. So what will they say in 100 years about what we did? And will they talk about whips and whips and FFOs and Will they talk about our retreats and our Q-snaps? And they probably will. So it was, um, she did a super great job. She's such a sweetheart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about the retreat. I'm going to minimize me so I can kind of still see myself. Normally what I do um, when I do like um, kind of slideshows is I... I try to do either a voiceover or I try to put pictures like up in the corner and I'm going to see if I can do it a different way so that I can talk long enough about what I want to talk about. So um, we're going to see if I can do this. I think so. I think I'm going to make more room for the pictures and um, talk about the pictures as we go. And then I'm going to put some video after this of um, different, different things that I took videos of. So video, 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 video. Okay, so these first pictures are going to be of Brenda's booth. And some of these designs are just coming out now. Like I should have them quickly, quickly. And they were so, so, so cute. The little, hmm, do I have it here? The little, oh, sorry, sweetie. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This little uh, kit was just available for the retreaters. I don't know if it will ever be available. It may just be for us. It comes with the little bubble, the chart, and you know, like I think the maybe the insert or something, but there's no fabric or threads. But it was, um, she made, a, I don't remember, 100 of them maybe or something, and there were 75 of us there. So, um, but I, I think they did maybe sell out, but they're really, really cute. So that was in her shop. Um, her shop was full of not only mo her models, but she had um, some antiques in there, which was really neat to see. She had um, waxers. And I actually bought a few of the waxers. I got, I'm getting into like, if I see these buttons made out of beeswax, it's really, really cute. And I got this pack of beeswax buttons too. Do I know what I'm gonna do with them? No, no, I don't. And then this is a waxer. It's it's kind of hard to see. It's so it's a hand with a like a like a flower, and it's coated in cinnamon. And I thought that was really neat too. I guess I'll put this stuff in here that way. It's all tucked away. And she had like scissors, and she had some kits, and she had some trim, and. It was such a, she did a great job with her booth. There were like levels and she had charts and she had her new charts there. So you, people who were at the retreat could get them early. Um, one of them that I really liked was, um, I'll see if I can put it here. The shepherd's, it was a shepherd's bush retreat piece from, I don't know if it was from 2018, but it will be available later this year. Um, it's not available right this second, but I will be getting those in. I'm on the automatic for those. And so just watch for it. But the other ones, the rest of the other new ones will be in soon. Uh, so the, the shop was set up. We got there on Thursday and then Friday, starting at 10, the shop was set up and people just shopped all day. And we kind of went in tables. You were kind of called as tables so that the, cause the room wasn't super huge. And that way everybody could shop without kind of overwhelming the booth space. So it was, it was nice. It was a good way to do it. It kept things very calm and organized. And I don't, I don't think I heard one person say that they missed out on something. Brenda brought lots of everything. And so she really made sure that everybody could get what they wanted, which was great. 
Uh, later that day, we went, I think just after we went to Brenda's, we went to a quilt store, which is next door. Um, and it was a really, really neat quilt store. They had a lot of different kinds of fabrics, different kinds of kits. They had a small cross stitch section. It was, it was pretty small, but some people did buy things there. They had some prim stitching things and it was neat. The people that, that were there were very nice. I think I bought a couple of pieces of fabric. I didn't bring them with me. So um, I, I will say now Marlene uh, Stitching by the Lake is her, is her floss tube handle. <clears throat> she offered to bring home, take home with her a, a big bag of st stuff I bought because fabric is heavy and then I got that bowl and I got a um, kind of a candle jar from um, Suzette. So a lot of those heavier things, we just were worried about our bags getting too heavy. And that way, um, she's gonna see me at the Silver Needle Retreat in November. So she just said she'd bring my bag of stuff then. And she, she took some stuff for Jen too. That way we didn't get in trouble at the airport. So we went to that, um, we went to that quilting store. Later we went to, um, some different like shops around the area. One of them was a kind of a mill where they make blankets and runners and aprons and things like that. And I wish I had taken pictures inside. It was so cool that I just didn't even think about it. Um, I took a really cool picture of me and Jen, which is, I may frame that one. I think it's really neat. We, look, we both look good. <laughs> so um, it was really fun to just, even just to go into these old buildings and I don't know that I did take a picture. There were really cool, did I get one? I really didn't. I didn't take as many pictures as I should have. But there were really cool old buildings that were made of stones, where it's like kind of irregularly shaped stones with little filler stones. And so everything was very, um, I don't know, it just looked like colonial or just really old. It was very, very neat. It, the, it was beautiful. Uh, the weather was amazing, especially compared to Hattiesburg, because I think just the week before we had still been at 104 at one point. This is what it's like to be in Atlanta on a beautiful fall day in October, following your stitching friends that you sometimes get to see and sometimes don't get to see very often. And it's a little bit breezy, and it's a lot of it beautiful. And what a cool little community this is. It just makes you feel like you're stepping back in time. And it's really not too touristy either. I feel like it's just... It's just nice. And it, it has cooled off now. We also went to the general store. And I'll include some pictures of some of the... Um, Christmas... Com some, there was There's like a, a conjoined shop that's only Christmas stuff. And it was overwhelming how much stuff was in there. I mean, it was packed with, I think uh, Priscilla would go bananas in there. She would find so many ornaments for her funny trees and her beautiful trees. Like you could think any category you could think of, they had it in there. And it was um, just full. Like I can't tell you how full it was. Like floor to ceiling, full, full, full. This is the Christmas spirit room. It's overwhelming. It's everywhere, it's on the ceiling. <laughs> on the walls. Pan out. Jennifer, do you feel the Christmas spirit? <laughs> really pretty and um, such a neat store. We didn't end up buying anything there. I saw, do, am I going to have a picture of it? Yes. A beautiful ornament of a glass butterfly, monarch butterfly. And it wasn't cheap. I want to say it was around $20. I just was afraid of getting it home. How I could ever get it home. It was very pretty, but I just worried that it's so delicate that it wouldn't make the trip very well on the airplane. Okay, people. So, Saturday. So then we stitched all day. And we had meals together. And we had a great time together. And Saturday, we got up early because uh, Brenda was going to supposed to start teaching at I think it was supposed to be 10 to 11.30 or something like that. Well, there was this store nearby, like 20 minute drive, called the Woolen Needle. Ruby, let's see what Ruby thinks of the Woolen Needle. Ruby, what do you think of the Woolen Needle? She's purring, that's, that's the right response to have. The Woolen Needle was, it is a wool slash quilt slash punch needle 
slash applique store. Everything in it. It's funny because I, I was like, they have really good taste. They have my taste. And of course, we all consider our taste to be good taste, right? I liked everything there. I liked everything there. So it was, we knew they opened at nine, but they were only open until like one or two. And so we knew with what was in that day that we were only going to have this small window. We had 40 minutes. If we were there right at nine when they opened, we had 40 minutes until we had to head back to get to Brenda's class just barely on time. So we were like, okay, we got to browse, buy, check out, and back in the car in 40 minutes. So we got up early. We got ready. We got there 10 minutes early. And I said, I'm going to go check the door. And it was open. And I, I poked my head in and I said, hey, we're here to look. Can we come in? And she goes, yeah, we came in early for you. We thought you might be here. So we were like, whoa, we got another 10 minutes. So we walked in. And we were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And we did, we kind of did this kind of thing. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Because it was like so much cool stuff. And we were trying to soak it. It was almost like trying to clean up, like you spilled a pitcher of something. And you're trying to like quick mop it all up. Like that's how it was with us trying to take all of this in, how wonderful this was. Um, the models were gorgeous. Their materials were gorgeous. Their fixtures were beautiful and they were really, really nice, really nice. Um, very just laid back and friendly and happy and helpful. Fabulous store. I'll put a link below and you can shop online with them. Um, the nice thing was is that for really pretty much any model, there were kits. And a lot of, so a lot of the kits I did not come home with. I sent them with a lot of the kits. I bought some kits. And they got sent home with um, Marlene. And so I'll show those in a future video. But it just was inspiring. It was beautiful. And so we, you know, within 40 minutes, we were done. And we just were like, like winded almost. But then just like at, so at, at 30 minutes in, um, Farm Girl and Kindred Stitcher and Textilist, Lori Textilist, came in. I'm trying to remember who else came in. And said, hey. Brenda's thing got moved back an hour because we knew people wanted to shop. And we were like, ooh, well, so we got another hour, but we had already kind of finished up. So then we took the next probably 45 minutes to just calm down and just browse the store more carefully just to look and like get ideas and talk about the models. And so that was really nice. Um, it is the kind of store I easily could have spent four hours in there. Easily, easily. And cute little town, wish I had had more time. Maybe next year it'll be, you know, maybe something that I go in early for and the day before really just take some time to be there. They do not host retreats, but they do host classes. And like I said, everything there, the models were just impeccable. Great, great, great. Okay. Um, of course, you know, retreats really are, are, you know, stitching, shopping, getting away from home, seeing things that people are working on, but it's really about the people. And so there were 75 people there, um, 76, 77, if you include Brenda and her husband, I think. And um, it's so nice to sit and chat with people. And the funny thing about Floss Tube is that you, um, you feel like you know people, even though you don't. Like you have maybe never met some people before. And um, maybe you've even talked to them like by email or in YouTube comments or whatever. But you you feel like you know people because they've been in your home, you've spent time with them, they've talked to you, you've listened to them, sometimes you talk back to them. So it kind of feels like a friendship is already there. So it's very nice to see people. Um, and I didn't, I don't think, oh, I did get a picture with Bendy Stitchy. Talked to Bendy Stitchy for quite a while. I talked to Linda Joe from um, Pretty Southern for quite a while. Talked to Suzette from um, Primitive, the Primitive? Suzette, you know, Suzette. And I talked to, why can't I think of it? I don't know. I'm on overload. Talk, got to talk to Brenda a couple of times, talked to Farm Girl, uh, talked to Lisa Kindred Stitcher and Lori from Textilist. I know I'm missing people. I'm, I talked to a lot of people. And um, there were some people that really came and hunkered down for a while and we really got some good talking. Um, I also talked to Kyle Rickemeyer. Um, and he has a YouTube channel. Maybe a lot of you don't know it. Um, he's the rare and, and uh, 
elusive male in the cross stitch world and he has a channel and he stitches a lot of like mirabilias and also samplers and um i just i really enjoy his um his he's genuine he's genuinely himself um, i'll put a link below to some of these uh, channels and be aware with Kyle's that he uses off color language sometimes. So if that bothers you, maybe stay away, but he's just very, very sweet and a good little stitcher too. And he said he's working on um, a piece this week. He's starting and they send on 35 count, which I think is great. So um, really just spending time with people. And then not only that, but spending time with uh, Kathleen, we spent a lot of time with Kathleen from Kathleen's Trodden Trails, um, Nicole, uh, my friend Jen, of course, uh, and it was just fun, fun, fun to just sit and stitch and chat and laugh. And it was, there was a lot of noise. And um, so that was really fun. Now the last day, so there was Brenda's class and dinner and um, then there was a, um, an exchange. And so we did an exchange where people could bring um, a finished project and it had to be a Brenda Gervais design and most people I would say participated some people did not but then the thing was they were all wrapped in at the front and everybody got a ticket and when your number was called you could go pick a prize and then um, come back with it you know keep it and then the next person would go and they could steal yours if they wanted or anybody else's or they could pick a, you know it's kind of like what's behind door number two or they could pick a new one now, somebody could only be stolen from one time. And I always get nervous when they're stealing because I feel like sometimes people's feelings get hurt. But it was very light and cheerful and funny and people were pretty good sports about it. So it actually was really fun. It took quite a while um, just because there was lots of goofing around, but it really was super fun and I got a beautiful little fob and it'll help me just remember what a great weekend that was. So we left, we, now we stayed at a bed and breakfast that was um, Der Heimat, Der Heimat, which was just a 10 minute drive from the, where the retreat was. It was in um, a house with lots of rooms and it was almost like staying at your grandma's house in the 1970s. All right, we just checked in and this is our cute little room. We have the tiniest bathtub ever. We have the tiniest bathtub ever. Would you like to see the tiniest bathtub ever? <laughs> it's pretty little. It's pretty little. All right. What do you think, guys? It's cute. It's very cute. We'll do the view out the window. It's very pretty here. It's very pretty. All right. So see you later. the decorating was very like 70s, early 80s. Um, breakfast was served every morning and it was different every morning. They had like real silverware and real cloth napkins that were different patterns. And um, the owners or proprietors were very sweet and helpful and um, kind. And it was uh, a great experience. I slept, Jen and I like slept that first night and we were like, oh, that was a good night's sleep. Here, I'm gonna center myself again. That was a good night's sleep. And so the first two nights I slept great. The last night after all of the activity with the exchange and just kind of coming down from the retreat, I hardly slept at all. I probably got two and a half hours and then at like three or four in the morning, there were hyenas that sounded like children screaming in the corn, which was <laughs> terrifying. And I thought like maybe I, maybe I imagined it, but the next morning several other people commented that they heard, not hyenas, did I say hyenas? Coyotes. Hyenas would be horrible. Those Iowa hyenas coyotes it was still terrifying and then we flew home and it was the travel there and back was not a problem everything went as scheduled <clears throat> it ended up being it's kind of a long day uh, when we left we got got up at four in the morning to drive to jackson mississippi to fly to dallas to fly to des moines and then kathleen graciously drove us from des moines to the retreat which was another hour and a half so really it ended up being about a 12 hour experience to travel. And Jen and I are thinking that next year um, we're gonna drive it because it's 12 hours if everything goes perfectly with your air, air, you know, airport experience. 
if you experience a delay, you know, like a weather delay or a craft that needs maintenance or a crew that needs to go home and sleep, you know what I mean? Stuff like that happens. Suddenly your day gets real long and we just feel there's more control over it. Plus we can bring home cool antiques or something, you know, or just whatever, just that we can pack more and it just kind of gives a freedom. Now, I'm stressing out about next year because I am the featured designer and Brenda is going to be a tough act to follow. Luckily for me, I have a year to plan. And part of why I was up late that last night is my mind was just churning with ideas. And I've got a couple of different kind of branches that I could take. And so um, I'm going to come up with some really good stuff, some really fun stuff. And uh, I got to talk to Michelle and kind of see what she's got in mind, but it's going to be good. I promise it's going to be good. And if you want to join, uh, I think there's a Cro Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat Facebook page that you have, you can join if you want to. I don't think she's taken names yet for like who wants to go. I think it's limited again this year, how many can go, um, but it's going to be great, great fun. And I will get to take a shop and set up too. That's another reason why driving is a good deal. Um, and it'll be similar to what I did at Galleria, probably just scaled down a little bit because the room is smaller, but it'll be fabric and patterns and kits and everything you can think of. And so it's really just going to be a super fun experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Michelle Rudy, Farm Girl, and Brenda Gervais for making just a memorable, wonderful, warm, inviting, happy, active weekend. It was, Jen and I were like, this was the perfect weekend. This was perfect. It was, everything was great. And um, it, we just, we had a wonderful, wonderful time and we wished it had lasted longer. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show some stash for a stash flash. I did get some of this in a mana and I did place an order. Um, oops, I placed an order like since the last video that I received in. And so I'm going to show you that too. Um, I'm going to start with these we went to the the woolen needle and when people came back from there the first day we didn't go until the second day they had these okay they had these i'm gonna i'm gonna blow this up i'm gonna blow this up rubes am i am i recording oop yes i am recording 25. okay so these and these are little packs of historic fabrics and they're called cigars so it's six inches, the width of the bolt of all of these fabrics. So it's great for making little quilting projects, for finishing. And they were $7.95 all packaged like this, which was really cool. It was really cool. And um, I've never seen those anywhere. Really, I don't think anybody else said that they had seen them. I'm not saying they came up with it or it's new, but it was new to a lot of us. Um, I also, oh, I didn't bring the other one. I guess I brought this. So... One, I brought this home because I wanted to show on this video because I love it so much. I got this fabric and I got it in cream too, but I didn't bring it along. I don't think. Nope, I didn't. But it had these birds. And so I got it in cream and I just thought it was so, so pretty. I got like two yards of each because I just love it. It is, if you're looking for it, it is a Moda fabric. It benefits the International Quilt Study Center and Museum. Um, it's by Howard Marcus. And it's called Collection for a Cause. Collection for a Cause. It's the Heritage 10th Anniversary Collection. And so there's a whole collection of fabrics that match this. Um, but this to me was the star fabric. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Obviously, project bags would be amazing. I mean, I think it's so beautiful. I, you could practically just frame a square of it. You know what I mean? Find the repeat and just frame it to be on the wall. It is gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. I picked this one up too. I grabbed this instead of... I just thought that was really pretty. But I got a I got a number of, of fabrics, wools and kits, like I said, and then fabric by the yard. Marlene's got those. So I can't wait to see them in November because I haven't I'm gonna forget what I have in there, right? Okay, so then what else did I get? In I showed you what I got in Brenda's booth. I got a man of popcorn. Because I like popcorn. Oh, I'm kind of glitching. I don't know why I'm glitching. I'm going to close this up here. Hang on. Let's see if we can, can make it a little bit of a smoother experience. I'm kind of needing a new computer at some point. I'm going to get a new laptop. Um, 
a man of popcorn because you know I like popcorn. And so we're gonna give it a try. And I actually packed this in my carry-on because I didn't wanna add two pounds to my luggage. Turned out I was like seven pounds under, I think. So I could have added that, but it's okay. So, no, I, no, I was three pounds under. I could have added it. I could have added it. Um, Suzette. Primitive Stitcher? Primitive Stitcher? It's terrible that I can't remember. Stitched um, some of us this lovely little tomato pincushion, and then it's got a magnet in the bottom, and it attaches to the top of a, like a Bath and Body Works type jar with a metal lid, and then she had it filled with candy. I sent the jar and the candy. No, I kept the candy. <laughs> I sent the jar with Marlene just so it wouldn't break. But I thought that was so, so nice of her to do that. Um, and uh, Kathleen from Kathleen's Trodden Trails gave um, some of us these little bags. They're uh, Love You More bags, right? Let me say that right. Yeah. So, oh, so much to love. So much to love bags. And so um, she filled them with like little stitching accoutrement. And that was very, very nice of her as well. Um, Linda Jo, Linda Jo came up at one point and said, hey, I have something for you. And I was like, oh, no, I don't have anything for you. And um, she gave me this. So, if, ooh, it smells good. Linda Jo, you smell good. So it's linen. It's made of linen. It's a washcloth, and it's for your face. And um, it's, she says it's supposed to get really soft over time. And I didn't, she asked if I wanted to use it like that night. And I was like, you know, I don't want to leave crumbs of myself in Iowa. So I'm going to, I didn't use it yet. I wanted to show it to you guys before I started using it. But I thought that was so nice. It's, she did a, she's, she is good. She is good. And um, she said that the fiber was tricky to work with because it's a little bit rough. It's linen instead of obviously like wool or cotton. And so she said she kept having to put it down because it was wearing her cuticle off, you know, where the the thread came over her finger. So eventually she just started wearing a Band-Aid over that finger so that it wouldn't, wouldn't scrape off her cuticle. Pain, a gift with pain infused. Thank you, Linda Jo. I love it. Um, okay, so this was one of the kits that I bought. I think I showed a picture of it in the slideshow, but I bought the kit for that because I thought it was so, so pretty. Jennifer said she's getting to know me because she walked around the store and she, she said mentally she was like, Teresa will like that. And I'd go and I'd go, Jennifer, did you see this? She was like, I knew it. Called it. Um, I got this pattern also, and it's called, what is it called? College Bound. And I got the kit for that, and that's with Marlene. But I like it because it's not, um, you know, it's not, it's not a beginner quilt per se, but it's like easier. And I want to say they used, I don't know. I don't know what kind of fabrics they used, but I bought them. We, um, I also got this, and this was, I may have shown a picture of this too, but this little, this was the first thing that I was like, I have to have that. There's a pin cushion kit with this heart in hand. And I think it was like something crazy, like, I don't remember how much it was, but it was hardly anything at all to get the kit, except you don't get the filling, but you got all the wools. I thought that was really cool. So I got that pattern. And then at the end, we got this pattern. I bought, I bought this pattern. I don't know if anybody else did, but our plan is to make this in 2020. It is a um, star a day. And if you do a star a day, you end up with this quilt. The pattern comes with little, um, little templates to cut the pieces. And I think it'll be one of those things that once we know how to do it, we will, oh, and K Carol Saltbox Stitcher. I got to hang out with Carol. I'm forgetting all these people. Carol. Um, I asked Carol Saltbox Stitcher if she wanted to participate too. And she goes, I don't know if I can, if I really, really want to do something every day. And I said, well, you could do seven on Sunday. And so may, that might be what I do too, is do seven, sit down and do seven on Sunday. But it's a star a day and it's very pretty. And I'll put the picture here again. I may have already shown it of what the quilt actually looked, looked like the way they did it. And the idea is that you can use a lot of fabrics that you have, little pieces and things. And so some of those cigars may get cut up for, um, for that project. Okay. Michelle Rudy, God bless her. God bless her heart, her pancreas, her liver, her spleen. If she still has her spleen, I bless it. She made us each a project bag, which was so amazing. Like I can't imagine how long it took her to, to make 75 of these. And she even made different patterns. And I was away from my seat 
and I came back and I was like, oh, I love that. And Jennifer was, Jennifer picked it out. She, she picked it out. She knew I would like the red and white, the red and off white. And then it's filled with lots of little kind of goodies too, little tools and things, which is very, 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 very nice. And I thank Michelle for that and everything. Okay. So I, I'm not done yet. Seems like a lot. Um, before, like a couple weeks back, I placed an order with Brenda G. Um, at her website and I'll put the link down below. She sells things on her website that you don't know she sells. And her website is really fun to look at. She does sell patterns by other designers, but she sells a lot of other things too that you're like, I didn't know she had that. So like she has waxers. I think I bought a waxer. I bought this waxer. I have to look at it. It's got a bumblebee. It's a bumblebee that's kind of cinnamoned on this thing. And I may use it as an ornament on the tree, but I may use it as um, sampler can sampler jewelry, which is what I call things that are kind of draped over samplers because it just kind of dresses them up. I don't wear jewelry, but my samplers do. I bought, hi, Zero. Hey, you guys have been missing Zero. It seems like he never comes by. Hmm? He never comes by to be held like a baby. So um, she has these cool kits to make project bags and they're Brenda G designs. I don't know if they're ones that you can actually buy to stitch, but they're Brenda G designs that are printed on fabric. And then this, if you buy the packet, it comes with everything that you need and the instructions and everything to get all of it. And then you can buy extra panels that are blank. And I bought one at the retreat. I don't know where I'd put it, but this is the one I got in the mail. Um, I think she has three different designs, but I mean, the whole thing is printed. Like the fabric is printed, the panel is printed, and then that red, I think, is for the little strawberry that hangs off of it. And so it's very, very clever. It's very clever, like Brenda G is clever. And uh, I think it'll be fun to make one. Um, they obviously would make great um, gifts for, I want to fold it just like Brenda. They would make great gifts for stitchy friends, either made or not made. It came with a little piece of wool too, for the, I think, top of the strawberry. But um, I thought that was just really, really neat. I hadn't seen those before. I hadn't seen them before. And then um, I just really want to do some punch needle this winter. I know I think I've been saying it, but I mean it this time. I really mean it. <laughs> I got this pretty. I'm going to take it out because it's. I do need to create a crinkle song, I feel like, because people say, you know, we need a song for the crinkliness of packages. People are like, oh, I'm sorry, this is crinkly. We love the crinkle. Crinkle means good things. Crinkle means good things. That's not it. So uh, this one is called Ober. Ober. It's so pretty. I want to make that. And then it's a little tag that says Burr. Burr, it says Burr. I think she's adorable. Adorable. Brenda G has really great uh, punch needle designs and they are not available. I used to be able to get them through Norden Crafts, but they're not really available um, anymore through the distributors. They're just not. Um, she is a great punch needler. And if you go to Floss Tube, the only place you'll find Brenda G is there's a short punch needle tutorial. So if you need a Brenda G fix, it's like a three minute thing. You can hear her soothing voice. You can get in the zone. You can learn to punch needle. It's a great thing. So I got that. I got, she also has patterns. She has lots of things that you don't know what she does. And so I would suggest you look around her website because there's cool stuff on there and her service is very good. But she also has patterns for um, dolls and things. And this one is with a paper mache head and you stitch her a little bag and I want to make her. Look at her bosom is so big. She's really cute. She's really cute. And again, this is not something shops can order. You have to get it from Country Stitches. And this one's called Miss Hilda, Miss, Miss Hilda. But she has other types of dolls too. I got a couple just because I want to try one and see how it will look. But I think that'll be a fun, I like crafting projects sometimes because it's, um, you really, I don't know, I used to, it used to happen when I was in school where I would just kind of get in the zone, you know, like taking a test and you just really get focused and a day can go by, but you feel like you got a whole bunch done and it was really fun. And then, this is called Madam Halloween. And this one is not a paper mache head. I think this is like a painted, like it's you make a fabric doll and then you paint it maybe with paint. 
but it comes with all the instructions and the supply list and everything. And I thought she was very, very cute too. Madam Halloween. So please do check Brenda's website out and support her. We all support her. We all support her. She's a great lady. Great lady. Okay. Lance Mustache Blanche. Oh, I have one more addition. So I went to Teresa Kogut's website and I carry Teresa's patterns in my on my site. She's a lovely lady. She has a great channel. I'll put a link below. I'm gonna have to put a lot of links. But she makes videos and she's really good at it and very interesting to listen to. She's such an artist and it's fun to see her sketches and her paintings and her products and her designs. She does punch needle and cross stitch. And she really just is a genuinely sweet, nice person. And um, she had shown in a recent video these cards that she made. And I, I, don't, I didn't see where I put them. I know I took them to show somebody and then I don't know where I put them down. Oh, there they are. I got them. I'm still here. So I bought, she's been working on these for a long time. And um, they're angel cards. So they're her paintings right? And they're, and they're, each card is a different painting of hers. Okay. And it's heavy. So I'm sure it's very nice. I don't want to open it because I'm planning on giving these as gifts, but each card has a Bible saying on it on the back. And so then the idea is that you can like slip this in with a gift or slip it in a card for a friend or put it in like a stitching bag. Like if you're giving a project bag, whatever, and it can, you know, pick out a verse that's meaningful to that person maybe or something that you would like to say to them. And so I like that idea. I guess you could also keep them yourself <laughs> and um, play angel rummy. I don't know if you could do that. But, you know, maybe just like you're having a bad day and you're like, you know what, I'm going to go pick up a card and read it and think about it. So you get 52 double-sided angel kindness cards and an instruction card. Um, anyway, I thought those were really neat. It, they're great. So um, her website will be below where you can find these. She has an Etsy shop. And I was like, I better grab them now because what if they sell out? Um, and like I said, I wanna give them as gifts. So while I was there, I saw um, she sells like plaques of some of her paintings so that you can like have a piece of Teresa Kogut on your wall. I'm just watching the clock cause I gotta leave in half an hour for sure. And so I was looking and I was, I found one that I hadn't seen before. And I was like, oh, I really like that. And it, you know, they're printed on like um, some kind of board you know, and, um, and, you know, about that big or whatever. I was like, I really, really like that. As long as I'm ordering, I'm going to order that too. Um, I try to, you know, kind of spread it around, get things, get things when I can. So, um, I kind of received a notification that things had shipped and I got a notification that there was like a credit, but I didn't really look at it. I thought like, oh, she credited me for some shipping because sometimes shipping's not as expensive as you get charged by Etsy and she refunded some of that or whatever. So I just waited and it came and um, brought it in and it kind of sat by the door with some other packages for two days, a day or two. And I was like, I'll get to that later. I'll just leave it wrapped up for right now. So then I finally, I was like, oh, I'm gonna open this up and take a look at the cards and the, the plaque because I could hang the plaque up. So, um, I don't know if I have it with me. I I opened it. I opened it, this plaque, and on the back, it said, Merry Christmas, Teresa. Thanks for all you do for the Cross Stitch community. Blessings, Teresa, October 2019. And I was like, that's weird that she would, why would she sign the thing? That, I mean, it was cool that she signed it, but I was like, what does Merry Christmas mean? Because I bought it. Like, Merry Christmas to me, I guess? Cause it's not a Christmas picture. She gave me the original painting. This is the actual original in my hand, in my house. It's lovely. She uses kind of mixed media. It is right up my alley. I love that it says friendship. I mean, I loved it and I wanted it obviously but her credit was crediting me back for the plaque and she just sent me this. Now, I'm not saying she sends an original painting with every order, <laughs> which I'm sure she does not. I was so like flabbergasted. I was like, Graham, you're never gonna believe what just came in the mail. And I think it's just really cool. And he was like, well, you're gonna have to hang it up. And I said, I'm hanging it right there. I had a spot where I had a Halloween piece. And so it's gonna be right 
here and I can it, I literally look right there and that's where it is so thank you so much Teresa it really it meant so much to me for you to share your talent with me and I just will treasure it it's gonna be with me every day and so thank you so much um, do check her site out she's got a lot of really cool things jewelry and but designs and every a lot a lot of different things tons of things um, okay, giveaway. The winner last time, the question was, what was your favorite Halloween costume? And the winner last time of some Primitive Things charts is Monica Goodrow. Monica. If you need a rhyme for Monica, try Harmonica. Monica Goodrow, she said that she went as the Tooth Fairy. She worked at a nursing home. And she went as the Tooth Fairy with a wand and whatnot. And she actually um, gave out Hershey's Kisses and told the, the old people that they were fillings. <laughs> she was handing out fillings, which I thought was really cute. So Monica, congrats. Please uh, hit me up at my email address below with your address and I will send you what you won. The, oh no. Oh no, oh no. I had a giveaway here somewhere. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to find a different one. Looking for a, a giveaway, guys. Okay, I'm going to do this. Giveaway for next time is two, count them, two Scarlet House sampler charts. Two Scarlet House sampler charts. Let me make, change my notes. Scarlet House sampler charts. Okay. Um, what am I going to do for a question? I don't know why I never do the, I never think of the question ahead of time. Um, are you doing any baking this fall? We just made blueberry muffins yesterday. And um, maybe say what your favorite thing to bake is. I'm thinking baked goods like bread, muffins, cake, pie, cookies, brownies, bars. Um, anything that you like to bake. We baked blueberry muffins yesterday. My, it's my grandma's recipe from way back in the day. And um, Graham, I, sa I said to Graham, I said, we, you know, we've got blueberries in the freezer. Let's make some blueberry muffins. So he, I gave him the recipe card and he made it. <clears throat> and I said, okay, but when you get to adding the blueberries, stop. And he said, why? And I said, because grandma's recipe is too skimpy on the blueberries. <laughs> so don't use her measurement. So he got done with the batter and... Um, we, I dumped blueberries in from, I got blueberries at a farmer's market from a bag and then you just put them in until it's good and, you know, good and full of blueberries. Steve opened one up this uh, last night and said, wow, these are full of blueberries. And I said, yeah, you're not skimping on the blueberries here. And I, and so we talked about, you know, just that probably back when she was making these muffins, maybe in the fifties and sixties or whatever, blueberries would have been really expensive probably. Um, and, and kind of a rarity. So um, her little bit of blueberries was probably all that they got or whatever. So, um, uh, I, I, then I remembered that, you know, sometimes you can get a, um, a, like a mix of blueberries and how they have that tiny can of like itty bitty bitty little blueberries. I always thought that was cool. Um, but I'm looking forward to baking again. I'm looking forward to baking again in the fall here. And now I got to be careful because there's two of us. So I'm gonna have to make sure to send bags of stuff home with Graham for him and his roommates so that we don't get that. Okay, so just tell me about what you what you like to bake. Um, and then you'll be up to win the prize. Coming up, I've got a bunch of things coming up. In a month, I'm gonna be teaching at the Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a, a class with three different pro little projects. It's gonna be super, super fun. I'll, sh I'll probably shoot video of those before I leave or at least pictures so that you can see. Um, and then um, there's a sampler that will be um, available, a sampler chart that will be available to purchase for, for retreat people that will be exclusive to the Silver Needle for a year. And so you actually will be able to order that chart directly from Lindy and when those are available, I will let you know. Um, I did show the sampler, I think last video and it's looking really great, it's looking really great. It's a really pretty sampler. Then in, then I have nothing until March. Thank the Lord, because I'm, I just need some time. And so I'm going to actually, 
um, start designing. Wednesday is just going to be design day. We're getting set up. Um, I'm meeting. The reason I have to go to lunch is I'm meeting with um, the girlfriend of Graham's roommate, and she may come and work for me too. I can't do it all, and I really would like to extricate myself from packing every single order. And so it's going to take some training in, but things are very organized here, and. Um, I just I need to have time to do things like make videos I have to you know I still have to place orders answer emails answer phone calls um, there's a lot to do designing making videos doing the social media stuff and then to pack you know hundreds and hundreds of orders every month it just is too much for for me um, so then I have in March I have Nashville and so I'll have new designs, obviously, for Nashville. And then a couple weeks after Nashville, I go to Georgia for a Sampler Guild retreat, and I will take a shop to that. And that's going to be fun. I'm not teaching a class. I'm just doing the shop, and then I'll have a design there for them. In June, I teach at the Country Sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. In September, I'll go back to Galleria. In October, I'm at the Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat. And that's what I've got so far. I think that's, how many things is that? one two three four five things for next year I don't know if I'll be able to add anything else I've had a few other people say hey can you do this can you do that can you do this and we'll see um, I don't want to overload myself because it getting ready for a class or a show is a lot of work and um, I really am continue to just be one person um, but I'm already making plans you know kind of looking forward to to see what else I can drum up so um, that's it for that I'm going to talk about three things in my shop and then let you go for today I added this week something that was on my list of things to add for the fall which is charts from the Scarlet Letter um, in Wisconsin and Marsha has been um, reproducing samplers since 1979 that's 40 years she's been reproducing samplers for 40 years and I think a lot of people don't realize that sampler reproductions go back that far, but they do. Um, I got in, I think, 76 of her charts. She has about 300 available. So I'm going to work on getting a goodly chunk of them added to the site where you can get them. I don't think a lot of shops carry them necessarily especially online. They're harder to find online. I want to have a very, very good selection of what she's got. And so I started with my favorite 75, but it's hard to pick favorites because I probably have 200 more favorites to go. But um, her charts are really great. They come with a history lesson. The charts are often printed so that they're, well, I can show you because I'm stitching this. Um, I showed you the Anne Grimshaw. I'm sold out of that right now, by the way, but I'll order more this weekend. Um, they come with and I'll show you. I'll show you. So it comes like this, you know, where you get like a lesson with a photo. And then on the inside, she's got instructions. And so if there are specialty stitches, she shows you how to do those too. I get questions from people where they're like, hey, I want to stitch this sampler. Do you think I can do that? Yes, you can do it. <laughs> yes, you can. You can. Because these were stitched by children who didn't want to stitch them, probably, a lot of them. You want to stitch them and you're an adult and you have great materials and you have resources online to look on YouTube to see how to make a stitch. You can totally do it. So I have tried, I have put on the website with all the charts, the different stitches used in each sampler. Sometimes it's all just cross stitch, but sometimes there's like, oh, there's a little back stitch. Oh, there's some Algerian eyes. Oh, there's Montenegro and cross, whatever. So it'll say with each one what the stitches are, but you can do it. You can do it. And so her charts, I don't want to like show too much of this, so I'm not going to show the whole thing, but they fold out and they're um, very nicely printed. And this, so that chart is big enough that it comes with two of those, two of those charts. But highly recommended. Love them, love them, love them. Got to go to her property back in the 90s and visit for a day. And it was just, it continues to be such a happy memory for me. I just really enjoyed myself. She's a great, great lady and so talented. And she just, she, she, a lot of the samplers she reproduces are hers, but she also has a good number of them that are reproduced with permission from collections, you know, museums and people and things. And so she has that information on there too, but she always, um, 
just does a great job. Just does a great, great job. I am carrying the, the charts, not the kits. Another thing that um, I got in my shop is uh, X Jude Designs, um, and her fabric continues to just kind of blow in and then breeze back out again. Designed me a fabric called Farm Eggs. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> She designed me a fabric called Farm Eggs. I have it in 32, 36, and 40 count. It's splattery, which I like. Um, it looks great with pieces that, I don't know if I have, where did my thing go? I don't even know anymore. Ow, zero. Um, it's really cool. When you stitch over this, it looks really great, especially if it's kind of full coverage. Um, it's awesome. So she uses Weigert based fabrics. I have a bunch of them in stock now, including some colors that are new to me, but Wednesday, I will have another shipment come in. I think I'm getting like 55 yards, another 55 yards. And I'm getting the jack-o'-lantern fabric and the grandpa sleeve, which people just kind of wet their pants over those colors. So they're, they'll be back on Wednesday. And um, she's got some new colors too that'll be available on my site. But then she said she sent me some, some samples and she wants me to tell her what I think. But she's a really nice lady. Her fabrics are great. Yesterday. Um, Graham said, oh, mail's here. And I said, oh, you want to bring it in? So he brought it in. He goes, there's a big box from Weeks Dye Works. And I said, oh, okay. I, want, um, I knew I had an order, but I wasn't kind of really planning. I didn't know I was getting it yet. And I said, is it heavy? And he said, yeah. So we opened it. And I was like, oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. The Weeks Dye Works Zweiger Base Linens are here. Oh, not all of them. I have more on order. I've had people asking for months, is any of your week's dye work Zweigert base? 46 count was the only thing you could get in Zweigert base. So they've released only 36, 40, 46, and 56 count. I don't know about plans for 32 or 28. I don't know. So only those counts, 36, 40, 46, 56, and only in a few colors, each count. So not every color is available in every count at this time. Um, I will keep up to date as far as if they add colors or not. I think it's going to go very well. I posted them last night and I'm already sold out of some of them and it's dwindling. So I'm going to show you, I'm just going to, I'll show you straw, I guess. So they turned out really nice and it's got that Zweigert orange stripe. It really is Weigert fabric. They smell new. It just smells like new. New. So um, very pretty. Not hor not horribly modeled. Not terribly modeled, but like kind of modeled. Like kind of some variations. It's, it's really pretty. It feels super nice. People have been asking for this for a long time, and it's finally here. Um, probably by the time I get this video uploaded, there's not going to be a lot left. I already have more on order. Um, but what I've done with each listing is I've put in the tag Zweigert. And so if it says Zweigert on the tag, it's Zweigert base. It is, I think it was a dollar more per quarter than some of the other fabrics. So not a big difference, but really, really nice base fabric. And I'm hoping that they add more colors soon. Um, so that was, I was just so excited. I kept just like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But I can believe it today because it, I had a night to sleep on it. Okay. Hopefully this fall now that I'm kind of done with a whole bunch of running around creation, I can make some videos more regularly. I do miss making them. They do take me a while. and um, But I, I super enjoy it. And I know y'all like to see Zero. I know y'all like to see Zero who likes to be held like a baby. All the cats have been doing great. Oh, and Harrison's doing great in Denver. Um, he had, he called... We talk a couple times a week and we're going to Skype this weekend again. Graduate school is very busy. He's doing a lot of studying, a lot of reading, a lot of writing. And then he's in a lab where, here, let's do this so people can see how cute Zero is. He's in a lab um, where they practice every week doing different techniques for counseling. And he, uh, he said that he ha they had one that was really tricky where they talked about, you know, um, sex. Okay, so you can't have a relationship with your client, obviously. 
And sometimes people who come to counseling feel like they've gotten close to you because they've shared a lot of their personal feelings and secrets and things. So you have to be very, very careful. So each, each student was presented with a scenario. This is your scenario. What do you say? So Harrison said his scenario was um, a lady who was 45 who was getting divorced and was nervous about getting back kind of on the dating scene. And so she was like, you know, I just, I'm so old. I'm 45. I don't, you know, dating is going to be hard. Nobody wants to date a 45 year old. Do you think I'm attractive? And Harrison said he went, nope. <laughs> Which, cause that's a trick question. Even if you're not a counselor, you know, if you said that to any friend or <laughs> your husband or whatever, that's a tricky question. So he said he kind of stumbled his way through it and did pretty well. And they talked about some possible answers and things. But um, he's having a good time. He's doing well. And we miss him. He'll be coming home for Christmas. So maybe he can stop by Stitchy Tube and say hi to everybody. Right, Zero? Right? I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great week and a great night and a great day and a great 2.35 in the afternoon. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Sometimes nature is tricky because Jennifer just told me these are poisonous. And Bridget ate some? Yes. They're really bright purple. They're at least the ones in Mississippi are. And Bridget thought they were pretty so she ate them. Then what happened to Bridget? Okay, my dad was on the chicken houses putting tin on the chicken houses. And my <laughs> sister Sharon squished one berry on her finger and she said, Dad, Bridget ate one of these. And he couldn't figure out what it was so I ripped the limb off and I ran up I said dad Bridget ate these and he jumped off the roof took her to the hospital and had to have her stomach pumped out really yes how old was she she was um one I was five oh, okay. and Sharon was nine wow poor Bridget